Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Lights. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again, as is our custom, as people on mission, on a mission. Go ahead, send the links out to as many people as you can, and then join me and let's worship God together and get into the Word. Hallelujah. Carry my matter for your head. Like a little baby, you watch over me, oh. You know they carry me, they play, oh. In the may oh, be no song. Oh, be no song, oh, oh. In the may oh, be no song. Oh, 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 oh,
Hallelujah. Go ahead wherever you are and worship. Go ahead and bless the Lord and praise him. Father, we honor you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. We honor you. We worship you. We exalt you. Lord, I come boldly before you. I come on the premise of my right standing with Jesus. Not on the premise of my performance. I come as a son to his father. And I honor and worship you right now. Blessed be your holy name forever. I ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word. I ask that your power and grace will flow freely. As we listen, the miracles are happening in the lives of everyone under the sound of my voice. I ask that you will grant me utterance that I can speak as I should, words and thoughts from heaven to flow freely through me to your people so that we can boldly say that we have heard from God and not man. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Good morning, everyone, once again. We are continuing on this subject of greatness. The overall theme um, that we are focused on at this time is greatness. St getting on the path of greatness, on the journey of greatness. And then today, as we began this yesterday, looking at the path of praying on that journey of greatness, praying and faith on the journey of greatness. And today we want to focus on how to speed up results, how to speed up results. And I, I know I've been there. There are times in our lives when it looks like some things are being delayed. Um, and tomorrow, I am going to talk a little bit about some of the causes of delay. But you can speed up the process of manifestation in your life deliberately. Now, how does this tie in with greatness? If you have been part of the discussions we've been having so far, it does tie into greatness. The Bible says in Acts chapter 6 and verse 8, which has been our text for this part of the teaching, that Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. And like we said yesterday, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great. Now, when you are on this journey of greatness, you have developed a world vision. You have begun to serve other people and their destiny and their path and journey to greatness. You have identified that natural side, that natural thing that you want to impact the world with. That gift, that skill, that talent, that experience, that passion that you want to impact the world with on this journey. And you've understood seed, time, and harvest and the principles of God's kingdom. All of this are already in play. But now, <clears throat> you will also oftentimes face opposition. It's inevitable. 
if there were no opposition, then everyone will be great. Everyone will be the greatness will no longer be great because it will be common. Every person would just go ahead and do it. And we will have everyone in this world great. But it is not so because there is always opposition. There's always that reason why. The reason why your music has not gone all over the world. The reason why you have not planted churches in every country in the world. The reason why you have not touched millions of lives with that thing that you do. There's always the opposition. It is something that has to be overcome. And that is where praying comes in. Now, opposition does not always stop us. Oftentimes, it slows us down. It slows us down. And then, before you get to impact many people or touch many lives, time is up. The devil knows that we have a limited time on the earth. He knows we are not going to live forever on the earth. And so if he can drag things out, if he can make things take 10 years, 20 years, that should have taken a year or two, then he gets you to do so far less than what you can actually do. And so, is there a remedy in scripture? There is. The funny thing is that most believers ha do not engage this. We have all kinds of teachings that has negated this. I have found personally in my own experience, that it's almost as if the devil has been able to create two camps, the faith camp and the prayer camp. The faith guys believe that once you say it once, it is done, it is settled. And so they don't pray, they don't know what it means to, when the Bible says the effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer. So they don't continue in prayer. They don't pray a lot. You find a lot of faith guys just take a minute or two, confess something and move on. Um, they see themselves as a conduit. They see themselves like a copper wire. They are not containers of power. They are conductors of power. The power rests in God and all they need is faith. Faith is what causes the conduction of power. Remember Jesus, all, Jesus said, who touched me? Because power went out of him in Mark chapter 5. Who touched me? And then the woman with the issue of blood came out trembling and said, I did. And Jesus said, your faith made you whole. So her faith is what caused her to draw power from Jesus. And Jesus felt power leaving him. So power is a tangible thing. But Jesus felt power leaving him because he was not just a conductor of power, he was a container of power. He was a battery, like we said yesterday. Jesus did not see himself as simply a conductor like the way that woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood did not have power in her. The power of God was not in her. So she simply drew power from Jesus. But as believers, we are not to pattern after the woman with the issue of blood. She's not a new creation. We are, the, our pattern is Jesus. And so yes, a person can by faith receive something like the woman with the issue of blood. But we are meant to be carriers and containers and batteries of his power. We are not the source, but we are like the buckets. He is the tank. 
but we are carriers and, con and, and, and buckets of power in our time and generation. And I found out that the more power that you, that you have in your life, the faster things happen. And because you see, even in physics, power is the rate at which work is done. That's how physics defines power. Power is the rate at which, at which work is done. Work is when force moves a distance. Back to physics 101. All right. So when you get something done faster, it's because of more power. When you get something done slower, it's because of less power. And power, spiritually speaking, now the, the, when it comes to physics, um, you find that there's a lot of mirroring. The, the supernatural oftentimes reflects the natural and vice versa. For instance, the anointing is a lot like electricity. It can, it can be conducted like electricity can be conducted. The uh, Bible says handkerchiefs were taken from the body of Paul and were taken to people and that touched the body of Paul, were taken to people who were sick and they got healed. Now that is not Paul's faith at work. All right, But the power emanated from Paul. Paul didn't create that power, but that power was in him. He was a battery of that power. And that anointing, just like electricity, was conducted from him through those handkerchiefs to those people. And when he touched them, they were healed. The shadow of Peter uh, healed the sick as he walked past them. His shadow healed the sick. That is the power of God radiated around the same way when you come close to high tension cables and high tension uh, uh, um, uh, uh, wires and all of that you literally hear the sound of energy uh, uh, um, when you are under such high tension cables and, and, and going close can be disastrous not just touching it just getting close enough can be disastrous and so this idea of generating power is something that as believers we need to um, give ourselves more often to. And when I, I use the word generating, but technically we are not the, the originators of power, but we are receptors and containers of it. And we said that yesterday, the Bible says that the person who prays in other tongues charges himself up like a battery. Charges himself up like a battery. So today, we want to take this a step further and focus on Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 to 8. We read it yesterday. We want to take it further today. Luke 18 from verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Saying, there was a, in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now, that is a negative already. When you have a, a judge who does not fear God or regard man, getting justice is going to come with opposition. Getting justice is going to be a problem. It's going to be delayed. So this, this woman or this person that's looking for justice from this judge is already going to face some delay. So it goes on. Now there was a widow in that city, verse 3, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But after what he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God... Now, he, he was contrasting, not really comparing. He was contrasting. He was not equating God to an unjust judge that does not regard man, nor fear God. No, he was contrasting. He was saying... How much more God, who is God and loves man, 
but he was bringing a factor that was to be continued. In other words, the same way that woman went about consistently hitting on the same thing over and over and over again, you should do that. He was encouraging his followers to stay on an issue and stay with it and not give up and not faint, but to stay on it in prayer until there's a manifestation. So he says, shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out, watch this, day and night to him, though he bears long with them. I tell you, he will avenge them. Here is the word we are looking for, speedily, speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he continues, will he really find faith on earth? So Jesus, in this passage, deals a lot of blows, a lot of revelation that we can unpack. So first he tells us that God is not like the unjust judge. And so the unjust judge took a while. But God, those who cry to him day and night, in other words, who, the, the word day and night is oftentimes used to mean repetitive action, consistently repeating an action. Those who consistently cry to God, he will avenge speedily. It doesn't mean it will happen the next day or the next week or the next year. It, it, it might still take time, but it will happen the fastest it can when a person cries to God day and night. So we need to define what crying to God is. Because there are people who say, well, I've been crying to God for a child for the last 20 years and I've given up. I cried to God for my mom to be healed and she died. I cried to God. So, but settle this. God who cannot lie. Jesus who cannot lie said in verse 8, I tell you. Always note when Jesus says words like, I tell you. He's, he's putting his reputation on the line. He's not quoting someone. He's not saying what has been said. He's telling you as truth himself, as the word of God himself, he's telling you something and you can take it to the back. Always note when Jesus makes statements like, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say to this mountain. Whenever you hear those words, know that you are reading something that is a principle that cannot change. I tell you, he will avenge. Settle in your heart that no matter what's going on, if you will cry out to God day and night, it doesn't literally mean morning and evening, morning and evening. It means consistently. If you will lead, cry out to God consistently, he will, Jesus said, I tell you, if, if this doesn't happen, then I am no longer God I am no longer who I am. I have lied. I tell you, he will. That, that gladdens my heart. Nothing, nothing is beyond this. Nothing can overcome this. Nothing is greater than this. There's nothing that this does not cover. The Bible says the word of God is alive and active. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrows. And then he goes on to say, and there is nothing hidden before him with whom we have to do. There is nothing hidden from the word of God. There is no issue going on in your life right now. There's no situation that the word of God does not cover. There's nothing going on that a word proceeding from the mouth of Jesus does not cover. This statement of Jesus does not look at your situation and say, well, no, no, we didn't factor this one in the, no, we didn't plan for situations like this. This one is beyond, this is what we're talking about. No. There's nothing hidden before him with whom we have to do. The word of God covers everything that it addresses. So it says he will avenge. So let's unpack that. What does it mean to cry to God? Because you see, if we understand that and we do it, then we have results. If we do what we think crying is, some people think crying is just going to God and crying 
And oh, oh, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying. Well, if you look at other passages of scripture, the Bible says that you shall have whatsoever you say. And so you are dying is what you're saying. And you call that crying to God. And then the person ends up dying. And they say, whoa, this guy cried to God. No, that's not crying to God. And you can see from this teaching of Jesus what crying to God. There's an element in crying to God. Look at it again. Let's start from verse 7 again. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, he said, this is the factor here. This is the issue now. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? So, a true cry to God has an element of faith. It's not a cry of unbelief. It's a cry of faith. Crying to God is a cry of faith. It is an expression of faith. That's why Jesus ended by saying, the issue is not, will God do it? The issue is not, will God avenge speedily? The issue is, will he find faith on earth? Will there be faith? Crying to God is a cry of faith. So a person saying, Oh God, I'm just dying, I'm dying. That's not a cry of faith. A cry of faith says, Lord, your word says that no evil shall befall me. No plague will come near my dwelling. Now I'm seeing these symptoms in my body. And I refuse to bow to it. And I call your attention to what your word says. Therefore, your, the Bible says to him that believes, there shall be a performance. I believe your word. And I demand performance. And you look at your body. You say, you, you cannot stay. Sickness, you can't stay in this body. Because there has to be a performance. You see, that's faith now. But in the, in the, uh, in the ear of God, it's a demand for vengeance. You are saying, what should be mine should be delivered to me. We're going to continue this tomorrow. But before I go, let me give you another scripture. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter should be established. Crying or calling out to God has to be with an element of faith. Or it is not a true cry to God. So, is that scriptural? Am I twisting scriptures? Am I taking it to an extreme? If I am, then there won't be another verse of scripture that says exactly the same thing. But if we can find another verse of scripture that says exactly this interpretation that I have given you, then we know it's true. For out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be established. In Romans chapter 10, from verse... Let's start from verse 10. It says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness... That's a powerful statement. We'll probably look at that again tomorrow. There's so many things to unpack. See, because the word righteousness also means vindication. Also means avenging. Daikaosune in the Greek. It means to be justified. It means to be vindicated. It means to be made right. In other words, if sickness is in your body, that's not right. All right? But it's with the heart. But let's go on. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, watch what the mouth is saying. The mouth is not saying something contrary to what the heart believes. But that's not where we're going. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So he's talking about faith here now. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. That's another way of saying who cry to him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now he goes to verse 14, and here's where I want you to pay attention. He says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him 
of whom they have not heard. You see, so faith comes by hearing. Believing happens when you hear. You don't decide to believe. Now, let me, let me rephrase that. A man can make the decision to believe. But the capacity to believe is not by your will. The capacity to believe comes by hearing. That's what faith is. You hear and hear and hear and then you, you come to believe it. A lot of you have, have come to believe not some things that you didn't think you would believe. Well, because you heard it and heard it and heard it. You listened to the news. Initially, you were not afraid of COVID. But then you heard and heard and heard and heard and heard. And you didn't even know when believing in the danger of COVID filled your heart. And now you were afraid. It always comes by hearing. Faith always comes. Even in the natural. Always comes by hearing. Alright, so it says, How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Now how do you hear? It goes on. How shall they hear without a preacher? So real hearing comes by listening to the ministry of the word. It's not just sitting down and thinking through it. That is encouraged in the scriptures. Meditating on the word is encouraged. But that's not the primary place. It is in listening to a preacher. And not just a preacher. He says, how shall they preach unless they are sent? Listening to a preacher that is anointed to preach by God. Listening to the ministry of the word. That's why the disciples, the apostles in Acts chapter 6 that we read yesterday. That's why they said, hey, it is not meat for us. It's not proper for us to be so focused on serving tables that we are no longer preaching the word and praying. So choose among yourselves people full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Choose among yourselves people full of faith and power. You see, they are the same thing. Choose among yourselves people full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, faith and power. So that we, let them serve tables, so that we can give ourselves to the two things that are necessary for every believer. Two things you guys really need. The two things that will produce the food tomorrow. Produce the food that we will serve on tables tomorrow. If we stop these two things, then there will, we will serve tables today, but there will be no food to serve tomorrow. The two things, he said, the ministry of the word and prayer. We need to keep teaching you guys the word. How shall you hear without a, a preacher? How shall you have faith, believe without hearing? So it's a process. A preacher, you hear, faith comes. It's why you can't miss devotions. It's why you can't miss Sunday morning in church. It's why the devil will fight you with the worst kind of tiredness on Sunday morning. Why he will fight you with the worst kind of tiredness when you wake up in the morning. Some people, after you made the decision, I will start joining in the devotions every morning. Suddenly, you feel more tired every morning than you used to. The very day you say, I'm going to separate today to fast and pray and listen to the word. That day, hung, hunger like crazy came. Because someone is trying to keep you from hearing. And let me say this to you. Sadly, if the devil is able to keep you from hearing, he has defeated you. Whatever has been able to keep you from hearing is, is, is one of the chief architects of your delay, of the delay you are experiencing. So real hearing, real crying to God, calling on God, is not just, oh God, oh God, please, please. No, the real call on God is a call of faith. The real cry to God is a cry of faith. How shall they call on him? So it's not a call on God if, it is not, if there's no believing. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? If there's no believing, there's no calling. Real calling comes with an expectation of an answer. The Bible says it in another, another place and I close. Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says that he that cometh to God, please hear this, he that cometh to God, must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is 
and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You see? So, coming before God, coming to God. Oh, I went before the Lord. I sought the Lord. I called on God. I cried to the Lord. All of those phrases are not possible without faith. Because he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. In other words, he's expecting an answer. He's expecting an outcome that is favorable. That expectation is what faith is. That expectation does not just happen. That expectation comes by hearing. And hearing comes from listening to the preaching of the word by those anointed to do so. Glory to God. We're going to continue this tomorrow. I, want, I mean, I was hoping to get into what it means to be avenged. To be avenged. It is powerful. Don't miss it. Join me tomorrow. Your greatness is assured. I decree it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Today, I'm, I'm making a bold ask. I'm asking, Lord, for situations that will challenge the greatness in us and bring it out and the strength and wisdom to manifest greatness in Jesus name Amen Amen Hallelujah Get ready That was a dangerous prayer Glory to God but it's a great prayer It's a great prayer and I believe God for it I believe God for it So don't worry if things look like whoa What's going on? Everything seems to be messing up. Everything seems to be going wrong. We just ask God to put you in situations that will challenge the greatness in you. And to, but once those situations arise, know that that's not the end of the prayer. It means it's a confirmation for you that the strength and wisdom to rise to the challenge is in you. Glory to God. And the end result will be greatness. I celebrate you. Thank you for joining in today. I look forward to have you join me again tomorrow. Till then, remember, you are loved by God. It's unconditional. And because of it, you will experience His wisdom, power, and favor. So keep living in the consciousness of God's love for you. And do have a wonderful day today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful day.